There's going to be a dedicated robo-taxi. If you actually do the math on that, it's insane. What's up, guys? We got another video for you here today. Today, I'm going to talk about my ultra bull case for Tesla, only talking about robo-taxi. We're not going to get into Optimus. We're not going to get into the energy side with Megapacks, which I'm super bullish on those sides as well, which I'll make a, a couple other videos for that. But today, we're solely going to talk about robo-taxi and why I think my bull case and why I actually got super excited for Tesla as a company was when I started to think about the potential uh, income that Tesla could produce and how world changing it is once you have a robo taxi fleet and self driving and how it can change the whole world of transportation. Let's get the video started. The, that autonomy is an insanely fundamental breakthrough and, and no one is even close to Tesla for solving generalized autonomy or generalized self-driving vehicles. No one's even close. Um, and and uh, with self-driving, as I was talking about earlier, the, the car becomes, call it roughly five times more useful, but it costs the same to build. Now, can you imagine what would happen if a company was doing, you know, we're doing like a 25 to 30% gross margins, but suddenly that same thing was five times more valuable. That, what would that do to the value of Tesla and the value of that car? It boggles the mind, actually. The numbers are mind boggling. So let's take a look at this uh, Google Sheets I made. It's arguable of how much you believe that the robo taxis could drive per day. Um, they don't have energy constraints. An Uber driver probably isn't going to drive uh, 10 hours a day for extended periods of time. Um, for instance, a robo taxi can technically drive 365 days, close to probably 20 hours a day, depending on demand. Um, you're not going to have you know demand for all cars needed at all times of the day. So I think I'm being pretty conservative. If you look at the first section on the chart. Uh, if an Uber driver drove seven days per week, 10 hours per day, how much could they make? I think if they really drove that much for the whole entire year, they would make well more than 50K. But I'm gonna say, let's say the robo taxi could make 50,000 per year. That's a little over $100 per day. I think it's um, about 100, let me divide, do that math. Um, 50,000 divided by 365. That would mean the robo taxi makes about $136 per day. And the cost of the robo taxi, uh, right now I think the cheap, I think the Model 3 costs a little over 30,000 to produce. And I think as economies of scale grows and with better battery technology and better production methods, I believe the robo taxi could be produced for under 20,000, but this is also including energy and charging costs as well as maintenance for the cars. So I'm going to give an average of 25,000 per year per car. Uh, that's in this section right here. And so the total cost, uh, Elon's talked about by 2030, they want to be producing uh, 20 million cars per year. I'm going to say 10 million of those cars go to the robo taxi fleet. I, I think based on looking at this model, you'll see why it could be smarter to maybe only sell about 5 million cars and put 15 million into the robo taxi fleet. But let's just stick to 10 million cars. It makes the math um, a little bit simpler. I'm not saying this is going to be exact, but this is just a good, simple way to look at it to get a kind of uh, idea of how the um, how much revenue a robo taxi fleet can produce. So for 10 million vehicles at 25,000 cost, your total cost for the year come out to $250 billion. It's insane. It's almost, um, you know, three, three times uh, what their revenue is in 2022. So obviously the company needs to grow. And I believe in these next, you know, seven, eight years that they are going to grow insane amount. And uh, right now the stock isn't showing it, but this is why I don't even care about short term. It drops you know, 20, 30% drops 10% one day and people like to freak out. I could care less. I'm looking long-term, I'm looking past 2030. As long as you're just, you know, continuously just putting money to it, every chance you can, every paycheck, putting a little bit of money into it, you know, who's, you're not gonna remember what the price was in 2022. So in my opinion, I could care less at short-term price 
targets, I'm looking into the 2030s, 2040s, 2050s. I actually, you know, don't even see a point of ever selling. So let's get back into the chart. Um, so if they produce 10 million cars per year in 2030, that's let's say that's when they start the robo taxi fleet. Also with their full self driving, if you're skeptical on it, you know, just look up some videos, find someone that owns a, um, a Tesla that has um, full self driving beta. I've driven in it, it's unbelievable. It honestly just is kind of mind blowing. If you're skeptical with Elon Musk, just look into SpaceX, look into Starlink. I don't know how you could be skeptical about what SpaceX has done and same person running SpaceX is running Tesla and you really don't think that he's gonna solve full self-driving. Um, that's a, an art, a different argument, but today we're just gonna look at, they do solve full self-driving and it takes even longer. So they start the robo taxi fleet by, or robo taxi service by 2030. They produce 10 million cars times, it produces $136 per day. At 50 creates 50,000 for the year. That'd be a total revenue of $500 billion minus the cost. You get a gross margin of $250 billion and that's a 50% net income. It's pretty unbelievable. Um, and the main, the craziest part about the robo taxi, uh, bit revenue model is the fleet grows but you still make the same money from the year before and you don't have the same cost. Obviously there's gonna be some cost for um, maintenance and electric uh, charging costs. So it's not gonna be just exactly that, you know, total increase per year. There's gonna be some cost from the year before, but it's gonna be very low relative to how much money it can produce. So the next year when you have your total fleet size of 20 million cars, and it's making that $50, $136 per vehicle, that equals to a trillion dollars in revenue. And your net income is only the cost of the new robo taxi fleet. It, it, like Elon said, the numbers are mind boggling. And right there you get into a net income of 75% and then so on and so on and so on. You increase the fleet by 10 million the revenue goes up by 500 billion every single year with it, and then minus the cost of maintenance per year per car and the cost to produce it. I think the cost per tes uh, for Tesla is gonna go way below 20,000. In the next year, they should announce a Model 2 version, which should be a 30,000 or under uh, Tesla that has full self-driving capabilities. I believe it's gonna change the world and so the 25,000 in my opinion is a little bit high, but I'm just trying to base in the, uh, the cost of maintenance and um, just, you know, we uh, tires and just different stuff like that, that could go wrong. Um, battery fail, whatever happens, you know, I think that 25,000 is a fair cost when personally I think the cost could be below 20,000. So as you get into 2039, you would have a total fleet size of 100 million cars and doing five trillion in revenue and your total cost is still, you know, f over $4 billion, 4.7 if you just add the cost of the new 10 million robo taxi fleets and each one is still from the previous years making $136 per day. It is pretty mind boggling. It's insane. I also made another chart where let's just say it can make $100 per day and then it just say shuts off, goes charges, it just waits or that's just the total demand is it all it can make is an average of $100 per day. Again, I think these are very low. You can make some models of each one making close to 70,000, but also uh, I guess it could be seen as fair for the $100 per day if you take into account uh, maybe if it gets rolled out in China uh, costs are lower, maybe in Latin America and uh, different countries where the uh, cost for a taxi could be lower. Um, so uh, in this model, I'm going to say each robo taxi makes $100 per day, which comes out to $36,000 per year. At, we're using the same cost per robo taxi, like I said earlier, should be much lower than $25,000, but we'll use $25,000. 
So that would give it an average of 11,000 in gross margins per year. So in the first year, you'd have a robo taxi fleet of 10 million uh, times 36,000 equals $360 billion in revenue. $365 billion in revenue minus the $250 billion in costs gives you a net income or a gross margin of $115 billion for the year. Just in robo-taxis, not putting in any part of the other um, of selling cars. Um, this doesn't mean that they're not going to sell cars as well. The mega pack size, if Optimus gets rolled out by then, they have so much other opportunity within Tesla that this is just the robo-taxi um, part of the company and uh, this is I would say why I consider myself a hyperbole is just doing some math on the robo taxi fleet they have so many different sections of the company that can make could be a trillion dollar company on its own that it, it just so when you see you know the small short-term drop in the company it, if you don't see that as an opportunity I, I don't know how to help you if you, I don't know how there's people bullish for the past couple of years when it was overvalued by um, say traditional metrics and PE and stuff like that. And then now as it actually drops to growth value stock levels that people are getting scared of the stock. It's crazy how emotional people can be based on stock price, Look, uh, viewing stock price and not the actual, how the company is doing fundamentally. Fundamentally, we're in a recession and the company grew at 40% deliveries for the year in a recession. As car sales went down for the year, their car sales went up 40%. So it's like, I don't know how you're, you could look at this company negative as they're excelling during a recession. How are they gonna do when the economy picks back up, interest rates lower again? This is just, it's, it's just an amazing opportunity. But let's get back to the chart. Um, and how another amazing thing is the margins for this because it just looks scared. Look at this, it can get up to 90% gross margins. If you think it's BS, please comment why you think this is just a total ridiculous sci-fi model and you think I'm you know, delusional, please tell me why. Um, but yeah, just as the fleet size grows, the revenue grows by, you know, what, depending on how much it gets per year, this in this one we're doing $100 per day, $36,000 per vehicle, fleet size 10 million growing per year. In 10 years by 2039, they could be doing 3.6 trillion in revenue just with robo taxis and over 3 trillion in net income or in gross margins. 3 trillion in net and gross margins. The highest company in the world right now by revenue is Walmart and they do about 550 billion, I'm sorry. And then uh, thinking about their gross margins, they have tons of costs, they have lots of stores and uh, deliveries. Their margins are much lower than what Tesla would be in this time. So how do you even value a company where one section of their company will be doing over a trillion dollars in gross margins? What is the value of this company? So when people say it shouldn't be, you know, it's crazy that it could be a trillion dollar company, we're looking at something that's changing the world. Um, and I, I can't even put a limit to what the value of this company can be if we start getting into Optimus. But again, I wanna stay away from Optimus during this video and stick to just the robo taxi. But this is why I am a hyperbole. Look at these margins. You look at the potential of what they can do. I'm. I totally believe that they could have full self-driving down 100%, uh, no issues. Right now, uh, driving in a, a full self-driving Tesla, there are a couple issues. A couple issues I'll mention right now are that it has with is roundabouts. And a lot of these things are things that typical drivers have in general. It uh, struggles sometimes with parking structures and like maybe going up to a gate, you know, how close do you have to get if it's not opening? You know, could you really just have no wheel when some sort of issue happens like this? What would happen in the case of an emergency? So I don't think that there, there's some issues that will take more than just like a couple years of training in my opinion. Um, 
to figure out completely. So that's why I'm being super conservative and saying the robo taxi network doesn't even start till 2030. Another issue it has is um, near my house, they have, um, um, uh, in, uh, when you merge onto the freeway, you have to get over extremely fast because there's an, an exit to another one. So if you just stay in this lane and cars don't let you over, you'll get off at the next exit. But you also don't wanna just stop to get over. It's honestly just shitty planning, uh, freeway planning, but, and it's very difficult. Like I don't, you know, if I think of like my grandma getting on the freeway and having to merge over in those spots, it's scary for me to think of her. I'd rather have a Tesla do it than her. But these are just like little small issues that to me will take, you know, a couple years, you know, it could be, you know, if it's excelling and with the Dojo uh, supercomputer, it could figure this stuff out pretty damn fast. But I think there's just a couple issues that even humans struggle with that, of course, the Tesla is going to struggle with. Um, but yeah, other than that, it, it does things pretty well. If you have FSD beta, please um, maybe drop in the comments some issues that you've had with it as well. Um, I'm sure there's a few other ones that I'm not thinking of at the moment. But ultimately, I think there's no possible way that they don't solve it by 2030. Um, and as you start looking into the numbers, I think RoboTaxi might have the biggest potential um, to grow Tesla's revenue, as well as Megapax, um, Optimus. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm very... Uh, bullish on Tesla, as you can tell by the name of my channel. And it's just a very exciting future that Tesla is creating. Right now, the FUD is at all time highs. People are scared. Um, it could be a rough year for 2023 for Tesla stock. Um, but if you're a long term investor, you just see that as opportunity. As you look at some of these numbers, if they could do a trillion dollars a year plus in gross uh, margins, and within 10 years, how do you value the company? In my opinion, that's uh, a 10 bagger. And if you're familiar with uh, Peter Lynch. So yeah, I, this, you know, lowering of the stock to me, it, you know, it sucks to see in the mean term, in the short term, and it sucks to see the, the hate Elon's getting. Obviously he, he brings some of it on himself with uh, tweets and he doesn't seem to be scared of the backlash that he gets. I'm, I'm sure he's well aware of every time he tweets something slightly controversial, he knows that he's gonna get some backlash. Um, I'm not too concerned about it in the long run. I know most people, you know, even around the world could probably care less. I don't think people in Korea are necessarily, you know, following Elon's Twitter or in Japan or China, you know, a big part in Europe. Are they really following Elon's tweets? I know the US right now is very political and very uh, divided. So once you kind of pick a side, you're kind of like alienating the other side. Um, so I think over time, this is gonna clear up. Hopefully you don't even remember, you know, Elon's tweets from 2022 when he first bought Twitter. So I think that this is just, just amazing opportunity for Tesla. And yeah, well, that, just want to show you guys some numbers. This is why I'm a, I consider myself a hyperbole. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Sean. This is the Tesla Hyperbole channel. Thank you for watching. See you next time.